Anyway, uh, my name is Jonathan Katz, um, and I'm here to talk about accelerating local search with Postgres 9.1, which, as I think we all know by now, was released uh, earlier in the week. So the interesting thing, the reason I say local search was actually, I did not pick the name of this talk. I was advised that I should, you know, this is what I should use. Originally, it was, why is Kanan just awesome? Um, I do like this one a little bit better. But what's interesting, you know, it's local because, you know, the concepts we're talking about, it's local because we're not searching, the data we're searching over is just like in small little clusters. We're trying to find things that are close to each other, things that are, have a little proximity. You know, things that, you know, are just very, I mean, I, I'm going to beat this point to death, but I'm basically trying to find my nearest neighbors. What, and what, what exactly does this mean? Now, I, I want to, like, uh, do some abstract concepts on this. So basically it comes down to, in all these questions, is how similar am I to something else? It could be a point in space. It could be a word. It could be, you know, a complex object. But I want to find the K closest things to me. It could be one. It could be three. It could be a hundred. And this idea comes, you know, the idea from mathematics is that we need to define a metric. Usually it's distance, and, you know, it could be distance in terms of, we think, you know, the, uh, the space between two points, or it could be something more complex, like a score between, you know, how similar is cat to dog? You know, it's probably zero. How similar is cat to at? It's probably, you know, we could define it to be like 0 0.6, 0 0.8. So the idea behind k nearest neighbor, um, I mean, Actually, just a show of hands. How many of you have done like machine learning type things before? All right, so the familiarity. You know, this is you know this is one of the first algorithms they teach you because you know it's very straightforward. You know, you have a collection of n objects. It could be points. It could be words. It could be you know some sort of you know complex you know n-dimensional data. We want to classify it. So the first thing we do is we compute the distance between all the objects. Then you know depending what our k is, it could be one again one three five. We find the closest objects to our unknown object, and based upon where it is, you know, we know we can classify it. We know exactly what it's closest to. So, when k equals one, so the easiest the easiest case to uh, to visualize, it's basically it's just the one point I'm closest to. You know, if I have like all these points over here, over here, probably this is probably the one that I'm most similar to. Uh, this is a uh, actually anyone know what this is? Very good. Um, it took me two semesters in college to get this down pat, but it's actually a, a very cool tool. The idea is that you know, you have, you know, when you do have all these points, you basically draw all the lines that are equidistant between uh, every single point, and then all I have to do is if I want to find an unknown point, I just go like here. Oh, I'm in this zone. That means I'm, you know, I'm most like this point. I'm, you know, I'm here. I'm most like this point. So this is a k equals 1 Voronoi diagram, and you can actually extend it to different orders. So k equals 3, you maybe see three points together in a very different set of lines. Um, there's been a lot of uh, theory and work done in terms of optimizing this algorithm because, you know, it's relatively important and it, it, uh, it uh, transmutes into different applications. Like, it's like the equivalent to like a 3D convex hull for a 2D Voronoi diagram, but uh, I digress. Actually, I, th I thought CompGeo was one of like the coolest classes I ever took. It just was like way over my head. I, like, so I had to take it a second semester to get it. So, th like I said, there's a lot of applications to this, and I think you know most of us see geolocation because points are very easy to describe. You know, we get it's visual. You know, we can see it. But you know, machine learning classification, um, similarity, which is you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give an example of that. But I mean. You know, recommendation systems, content-based image retrieval, we can see there's overlap. We can see, you know, if we, you know, we take two images, put them together, we can probably see, you know, how, cl how close they are to one another. So back to Postgres. You know, Postgres actually has some native support already for a lot of these data types. You know, we do have uh, basic geometric type support. Those of you who say use PostGIS, let's talk about that later. Um, and, you know, there's also this uh, trigram library, which, you know, was a relatively recent discovery for me, for maybe you know a few months ago, but basically what it does it does a simula similarity uh, scoring based upon uh, some you know based upon your text, based upon you know sentences or small sentences, small words, small phrases. Um, I would not advise it for using it for uh, larger larger things. That's where uh, the full text search library comes in. But um, 
No, for small, when you're comparing small phrases, it's actually very useful, and I, I used it in application uh, very successfully. So, Kane and GIST. Uh, everyone familiar with what, what the GIST index does? Well, I'm going to tell you anyway. Basically, the GIST index was a generalized index that was created where you could take any kind of operator, and as long as you match the GIST interface, you can plug in, you know, you know essentially anything could be indexed. Still, it's a little bit complicated to do. I, I looked at the API and I was like, oh, wow. But um, the idea is that you know, all the indexing is done. You just, have, you just need to interface with the right components. So you, know, you don't need to reinvent the, the wheel. Um, so this distance operator has been defined in both uh, the, the geometric and the, the, tri, the trigram library that is gonna, that's you know, gonna work for our k nearest neighbor. And k in our SQL syntax is just the limit. So I, I'm pretty much going to say k the entire talk, but just know k is your limit. So one interesting point when I you know when I first saw when I first saw a talk about this, and you know, when I first played with it, that there are, there are some inefficiencies. Um, first of all, um, the biggest one is that if you have like a set, let's say of a hundred, you know, a thousand, a thousand points, you know, your n equals a thousand. If you're doing a search of a, you know k equals n or very close to that, it's going to be very inefficient. It's just you know you're basically returning your entire data set. You might as well just do you know, select star. But also, um, if your data set is small, this actually isn't that useful, because there is some overhead to calculating the index, and it does do a lot of searching. So this is much better, you know, you see much better results in larger data sets. Let's say, you know, let's say like 100,000 entries. So let's prove it. We're going to, you know, let's look through all the, you know, the two libraries I mentioned. So first, the trigram library. And I, I, I created a benchmark. I used about 100,000 names, 700,000 unique, because my name list wasn't that long, and I didn't want to you know, start like, making up 300,000 more names. Um, so there are two indexes that I created. Uh, the first w was a B tree index, and you'll see why later. And the second was using uh, the gist uh, trigram operations. You know, th this, this is all in the documentation. I decided to set my k equal to 10, because I figured, you know, let's it seems like a good number. This is usually a number that we play around with. We could have done three. We could have done one. It's kind of boring. But you know, 10, especially with such a large data set, you know, if we're, you know, in, like, in the real world, we're trying to, you know, we're not, we might not have the best results in our, you know, our first choice or our first three choices. So you know, let's look at 10. It's reasonable. So here's what I ran in a 9.0. You know, I guess I have a little bit of an ego. I used my name. And uh, just, uh, just to clarify, basically uh, the, the percent operator in this is defined to be uh, uh, the, so the similarity function returns a score, and it's anywhere between 0 and 1, where 1 is, you know, you're identical, and 0 is, you know, you couldn't be farther from the truth. Uh, the percent sign is basically a cutoff, you know, it's your threshold that says, you know, after you know, a certain point, you know, don't return results uh, below a certain score. I think it defaults to point four, but uh, it's, a, it's a parameter that you can set. So here's my query plan in 9.0. And, you know, I don't, I don't really, you know, it looks, looks like any other, you know, it does, it hits the indices, you know, nothing too special. What's interesting is when I ran this against 9.1, you know, just showing I ran the same query, it's pretty much the same query plan and ran about the same amount of time. And this is actually a, uh, a question I want to raise to some of the, you know, some of the contributors about this. You know, wh you know why is this so similar? You know, it might have been something in my configuration. It might have been, you know, maybe I need to tweak my, uh, my, my query pl uh, planner parameters a bit better. But um, all is not lost because the other cool thing about this extension, which I think is very useful for just about all of us, is that this is actually an improvement for like and I like. Um, Especially, you know, normally when you get the, the index optimization you get with uh, these two methods is when you have a wild card to the right of your statement because the B tree, you know, it knows uh, to search the B tree index properly based on that. But suddenly we can use wild cards anywhere and we're getting a pretty big speed up. So, you know, you look, you look at the 9.0, you know, we're doing a sequential scan, you know, that, that makes sense. But in 9.1, we're hitting an index, you know. I mean, granted, I mean, the speed up here, if you look just at raw time, you know, it's Maybe not, it's not like a, a, a you know, 10x or, you know, something crazy significant, but still faster. And if you're doing a lot of search queries, you know, simple, you know, I know the web apps I write, we're doing like simple search queries like this all the time. That's a good, that's a pretty good jump. 
So geometry, geolocation, however you want to call it, you know, the, at, the, at the heart of it, it's just points. So here's, you know, here's uh, the, the data set I used, you know, two million points, uh, made them completely random. And I created, uh, the index I created was, um, uh, so I just created a regular gist index on uh, the, uh, the coordinate, uh, basically uh, the, the field I was storing the data type. And I ran this on both of them. Basically, I, I, I just chose a, random, a point at random, you know, 500, 500. I figured, you know, it seems like a reasonable point. And here is where you see the really big win for Kane and GIST. You know, look at 9.0. We go through, first of all, it's a complex plan. You know, we do a sort, and then we do another sort, then we do sequential scan. But our runtime, you know, in this, just this one query, to find our 10 closest points takes a second. You know, that's, you know, in, the, in this world where we're checking in everywhere on Foursquare and Twitter and Facebook, you know, that, that doesn't, we can't do that. But in 9.1, we hit an index, and we get a result back in, like a millisecond. I mean, that's pretty incredible just for like any kind of search. So this is why I think it's such an awesome feature. So, so what do we conclude from this? Um, just, you know, the gist is pretty powerful. You know, as long as we can figure out, you know, as long as, we, well, I shouldn't say we, as long as, you know, we keep interfacing with it, you know, I keep designing better metrics and better way, uh, better, uh, you know, different operators we can index on, you know, we can do a lot with this. And, you know, the, hard, the heavy lifting is already done. It's just defining, you know, what exactly we want to index. And, you know, this sort of uh, opens, you know, more applications we can start building, you know, on 9.1 uh, without installing uh, any, you know, external libraries. So what, what are the next steps, I feel? Well, here's a wish list. Um, until, you know, my, I brush up on my C and, you know, I have time to write C. You know, I, I would like to see some more geometric type support in Postgres, and I'm more than happy to debate, you know, this versus PostGIS. And first of all, I think PostGIS is amazing, and I definitely, I always look for an excuse to use it. But quite often, some of the, with the applications I write, I don't need the full PostGIS installation. I want something lightweight. I want something, I just want to, you know, run within my Postgres environment and, you know, do as much as I can, especially for things like, you know, a, a geocode search. You know, I don't need, you know, all the crazy geographic types if I'm just trying to find, you know, what's, you know, like, what are the closest restaurants to the Western? Um, so one interesting thing I found uh, during my experiments is that there's actually no equals operator for the point type, which is actually kind of a different problem than this, but uh, I ran into it uh, when I was actually uh, writing an extension for, uh, for Django. Um, when I, I was trying to do like a, like a fairly simple search over my data set, but the point, the point type was crashing because there was no equals operator. and I mean, I think the, the issue is that it has, it has to do something with like the B tree index and like properly uh, integrating with that. So one uh, crazy thing I tried, I'm trying to propose, um, and this is this really goes into the machine learning world is I think it would be cool if uh, distance could be uh, commutative. You know, if we could take it. You know, let's say I have my uh, array, I have my tuple of um, data. You know, my text data, my my uh, point data, maybe even like numerical data, because you know, we know how to define distance over you know, simple integers, and just you know, be able to get a score based on, you know, I, know, I, know that I know how to do the distance between two, you know, two uh, strings, I know how to do the distance between two points. Let me get my aggregate score, and you know, let's get some more machine learning people using Postgres, because hey, it's pretty easy to calculate. So references. Um, uh, Oleg and Teodor, they did, you know, they did the heavy lifting on this. Uh, definitely check out their talks and the documentation on this. And uh, I used uh, uh, Hubert Lubachevsky's uh, example for benchmarking um, when um, he actually, he eventually did some benchmarking for this uh, last year. And that's that. That's about uh, 20 minutes. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Or is it limited to just not? But well, you were talking about another feature that you wanted to get oh, with the 10 dimensional point. That would not apply to the. That's correct. That's just, um, yeah, that's just me uh, uh, being, being hopeful. Oh, okay. I mean, because I, you know, I think I, I see it really more in. Um, actually, for, for, actually, let me, me uh, re answer the first part of your question. I think when you said, you no, know, and the n dimensional search would be the last part, which is, you know, we can't apply. 
we can't apply it like that just yet. But that's more how uh, the, the distance operator is defined. Um, so the distance operator is two-dimensional? The distance operator on a point, yes, because points are just two-dimensional in uh, Postgres. To get three-dimensional, you'd have to use PostGIS. To get n-dimensional, that doesn't exist yet. Yeah, I mean, I see. For me, for me, I see it more in like machine learning type applications. But I think, yeah, I think I think it'd be a uh, very useful. Yep. So there's no special operators or anything that you have to use when you define the distance x is going to be equal to tan inverse. Uh, no. Well, just um. It's just a matter of finding the distance x and off you go. Yes, with the small exception of. Um, for the trigram library, you you basically index it over the the, the yeah, but. Other than that, no. On the other important thing, which uh, burned me the first time I was doing this, to actually get that trigram support I showed, you do need to make sure you have your regular B-tree index defined on that column. Excuse me? Yeah. But I think, I, I mean, for like the sp for especially for like, like I like searches, the speed up you get, I think it's worth it. The limit. Yeah, basically, if your data set is large and your k is small, you get really good results. If your data set is small and your k is small, you know, it's You'll get some speed up, but it's not, it's not the same as if you have just a really large data set and you've already done like this exhaustive uh, index calculation. Actually, the indices are created you know, fairly quickly, too. I think it took maybe, when I did it on you know, the 2 million points, it took maybe 10 seconds. I, I could, I could re-benchmark that. If you don't use the limit clause, mm -hmm. it won't go for that. No. no. Even if the data set is small or yeah, well, then, but that, that, that becomes then an issue with just the planner, because the planner will say, well, you know, the data set's small, you know, I'll probably just get a sequential scan because, you know, I'll get, I'll get the results back pretty quickly. I would guess that straight up support would be the only way to bubble up data to the entire thing. But you can throw it away for all the subjects and reduce the data set. Without the distance clause, you won't use that. Correct. Well, I mean, but th that's really where the magic is because you know, I, you know, I, we've already, we've already done the heavy lifting, figuring out, you know, if I had this particular, you know, let's just use point. We have a particular point. We already know what's like really close to us. Anything else? Okay, well, thank you. And uh, if you're staying for the next talk, I believe it's starting uh, immediately following this. Thank you. Very much. Thank you.